This is one of the craziest stories I've ever heard. It's about the great American train robber, but the person in this story is much more than that. I would classify him as a great escape artist. Sure, he was a robber, but he would go around robbing different places and he would get caught and he would just escape. So he didn't care if he got caught. Um, that's pretty evident um, throughout the story. This is the story of Roy Gardner, the great American train robber. If you enjoy the story, don't forget to like, leave comments, and subscribe. It's much appreciated. Thanks for watching. Roy Gardner was born in the Midwest, but his story really starts in Mexico, just before the Mexican Revolution. Roy Gardner was actually bringing in arms for Venustiano Carranza, who actually ended up um, defeating Pancho Villa during the Mexican Revolution in 1915, but that was well after this. This was only 1909. Gardner was actually captured and he was sentenced to death by firing squad in 1909 for helping out uh, Carranza. He would never meet that fate in prison in Mexico City. He joined forces with two other uh, American inmates and they jumped an armed guard. They subdued him and got away and made their way back to the United States where they were away from Mexico and free again. After this, he became an amateur and professional boxer and he was actually really good and um, was kind of started making his name known as kind of a tough guy. But then uh, he was subsequently arrested in San Francisco for robbing a jewelry store and he was sentenced to San Quentin. However, he would make early parole in San Quentin because a riot broke out and he actually saved the life of one of the prison guards. So they had a hearing, they paroled him early, and he was once again free. In 1920 in San Diego, he robbed $78,000 from a mail truck and two days later was caught and arrested again. For this crime, though, he was sentenced to 25 years at McNeil Island in just outside of Tacoma, Washington. And when he was sentenced, he proclaimed that he would never serve his sentence. And he was right. He didn't. On the way to Washington to serve his sentence, he was in the train and coming back from lunch, he and two other inmates subdued the guards and escaped. Next, he stole $187,000 from the mail car of a train right outside of Roseville, California. Right after he stole the money, he exited in Roseville, and then three days later, he was caught in Roseville gambling all of his money away. It's pretty clear at this point that he just didn't care. He was really good at escaping prisons, and he was just kind of this tough, free-willing guy that just didn't care if he was going to get arrested. He would steal the money, he would go out, have a good time for as long as he could, and then they would catch up to him, arrest him, he would go to prison, and then he would escape. Exactly what he did again. So, on September 5th, 1921, Gardner was out in the yard watching two inmate baseball teams, and he was sitting on a bench with, with two inmates next to him, and just not far away from where they were sitting was a fence that had a hole in it. Not sure how that hole got there. Maybe they had planned this. Maybe they just noticed it that day. Not sure. But Gardner noticed that the guards were more interested in watching the baseball game than they were in watching any of the inmates. So there was a pitch. The batter made good contact. What looked like was going to be a home run. Gardner immediately nudged the other guys. He said now, and they took off. They made it through the hole in the fence before anybody even noticed that they were gone. The problem with this was that there was a wide open field on the other side of the fence. So there were some cattle out there, but as they were running through the field trying to hide behind the cattle, the guards were up there with their guns just taking shots at them. As they were dodging and weaving through the cattle, the, the two other inmates actually got shot and they both died. Um, Gardner actually got shot through the leg, but he was able to make it to a tree line and get into the woods where they could no longer shoot at it. Shortly after his escape, they had a party of guards that went out searching for him and they got all of the boats off the shore and pulled him up and locked him down so he wasn't able to get off the island. So they felt very confident that he had not left the island. He actually hadn't left the island for at least the first couple of days. He hid out in the trees, in some rocks, and was hidden away from everybody while they were searching. But two weeks later, they had scoured the entire island. They hadn't found anyone. And the warden had to announce that Gardner had escaped. Over the next few months, Gardner was the main suspect 
in uh, several attempted robberies. Um, the people who were there who had seen the person who tried to, to rob them said that it was definitely Gardner. So they were looking for him. They knew that he was on mainland and, and they, were, they were looking for him. So in November of 1921, Gardner tried to rob the wrong train. He was right outside of Phoenix, Arizona, and he went into the mail car, was gonna rob the mail car, but the mail clerk that was in there was a tough guy just like he was, and he was able to overpower Gardner, and he held him down until the authorities got there and arrested him. He was sent to Leavenworth, Kansas to serve out his sentence. There he tried to escape but was unsuccessful, and when he did, they put him in solitary confinement for several months, and he actually went kind of crazy, and because of this, they actually um, submitted him to a psychiatric ward where he also spent several months there. After the psychiatric ward, they sent him to Alcatraz where he served out the, the remainder of his sentence and was actually released in 1938. Shortly after his release, he published his own book called Alcatraz, and then in 1940, he took his own life. Over the course of his robberies, he ended up stealing over $350,000. 250,000 of it is expected to be buried somewhere along the west coast and nobody knows where that is. So if you can track that down, you'll have a quarter of a million dollars out there waiting for you. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like, leave comments, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.